Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. My voice is quite hoarse. It hasn't been an easy day today. Um, my name's Aleni Banda. I'm the sister to Honorable J. Banda. I must state that even to come here to talk about this, it's because we've been pressed beyond what we can sustain as a family. We feel not only abused, but mistreated in a country we call home. From Saturday, Sunday, until now, it's been trauma for us. We don't know to other members of the press what this may be, or to members of the public what this may be to them. But to us, this is one of the greatest pains we've had to endure as a family. And today, it became more traumatizing. Around 12 a.m. in the morning, um, I received a call on my mother's phone. My mother called me and says, there's a call that is coming. I want you to take it. I asked her who was calling and she says, I just want you to see. I don't know who is calling. And you know, we are already in a period of distress. So I told her, okay, no problem. Don't worry about it. I got the phone from her. I had found two missed calls. And just when I was getting the phone, the call came through again. It was a number ending with zero two. <coughs> and uh, when I picked up, the person didn't even introduce themselves. They first asked me a question if I knew who Honorable J. Banda is. And I told them, yes, I know him. Uh, who are you that is calling? He says, um, we've picked someone um, who claims is Honorable J. Banda. We just saw a vehicle that dumped him. So when we tried to go after him to see how we can help him, he crawled up to almost close to our house and we helped him and we started pouring some water on him until we started interrogating him, asking him, and that's how Honorable Jay gave them my mother's number. So from there I asked him, where are you? And where are you calling from? And then he says, um, Kafiwe boys, in Kafiwe, as you are heading to Kafiwe Boys, Kafiwe Boys Junction. We said, okay, what time did they drop him? He said, um, they dropped him around almost 23 to midnight. So they were trying to get him awake. So they were pulling water on him and trying to get him warm to see how best he can talk and they can have a lead. Immediately I called out my sisters and my mom as well as my nephew and my other brother, Mavuto, I said, we've received a call. We all just got into a state of shock. We couldn't even get our shoes. We all just jumped into the vehicles. We started driving and we went direct to Woodlands Police. We left uh, empty there. He made a report at Woodlands Police and reported to say, this is what we've received. Well, the rest of us, uh, my sisters and my sister-in-laws, we headed to Kafiwe. I was the one driving. We started driving as fast as we could. When we 
reached uh, Chilanga, mm -hmm. we found some police officers on the road, actually. We stopped over, we spoke to them, we told them we received the call. We asked them if they were aware about the matter for Honorable JT Band. And all of them they said, yes, 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 we are aware. And we told them to say, we've received a call that um, someone has dumped him in Kafue and the well wish has called us. We would like you to escort us because we're not sure whether it's just a well wisher or this could be a trap maybe by the abductors. And uh, the officers, they were very helpful. Uh, one of the officers was, I think, Mr. Mwale, who told us to say, OK, fine, we've taken note of your report. Give us your phone number and uh, proceed to Kafiwe. I'll be in touch with you. Go to Kafiwe police station. As we were driving, uh, we were worried because this person kept on calling us. The world wish called us like twice. And he said, please, please, you need to rush. So my sister-in-law decided that he needed to call some of the people she knew from Kafiwe. And uh, she managed to get through to someone, but they were also in Kafiwe estates. And uh, they agreed to say they would help. They would rush to Kafiwe police station to see how maybe as we are driving to Kafiwe, they can get there on time. We tried to move as fast as we could. And luckily also, the person our sister-in-law had called had also reached the police station. And, um, but he was told some of the officers were not there to escort him. So he had to go and pick up, I think, two officers from their homes. So it also caused a delay. It delayed them so much that we even arrived at the scene at the same time. He had picked the police officers, and we were also arriving. Already for us, we were very disheartened because one of the reasons why we had to report, we were hoping that the police would even move in before we get there. Because it's almost over 45 minutes to drive from Lusaka to Kafiwe. It's not... It's not just a short distance. So we reported, hoping that the police would intervene as fast as possible to get there even earlier before us. But we were all shocked that we got there at the same time. Um, we found him. He was almost unconscious. His body was completely almost cold. And we tried to, we tried to talk to him. At least he could recognize voices here and there. And the police officers now started shouting at us, no, move away, move away. So we got upset. We said, why are you even asking us to move away? You are supposed to be here early. And uh, that's how they say more wishes who called us, even helped us. We, asked, we requested for a mattress and some blankets because we noticed it's like from the roadside, he was only crawling on his stomach. He couldn't move his back. And he said he was experiencing a lot of pain. They couldn't even tame him. So we had, uh, they had to get a mattress, and um, they pushed him onto the mattress. So we used a mattress from the well wishers to be able to place him in the car. Um, he couldn't even move. We started following the vehicles together with the same van for the well wishers and uh, the two police officers that were picked until we got um, to... Kafiwe General Hospital. When we got to the hospital, um, quickly the staff to help. The staff there were very hopeful. Yeah, the doctor on duty was not there, but at least they called him, and uh, they called two of them actually. One actually came, and um, they started uh, treating him. And though they noticed that his body was too cold, and um, so the blood couldn't even come out when they tried to place the cannulas. So they started looking for some hot water to see how best they could get his body temperature to come back to normal. And uh, I was present, very much present, even when they started the examination, we were right there. We noticed the serious beatings on his back, you know. And most of them were concentrated on this but the back part of his body. That's why his waist, he can't even move it. And also, you, it's like they tortured him a lot uh, below his feet, like 
it's like someone was using something, I don't know, maybe something sharp, so you could notice even from uh, the pictures that we took, they are like red, red spot below his feet, and also like serious swellings, because we were there like first hand, so we took the first pictures. I actually helped him with uh, the coat that the well wishers had put on him to take it out because we really wanted to see. And the doctors were also there, were doing it in front of the doctors. Even the pictures were taking them in front of the doctors. And he was just drowning. He kept on, uh, he repeatedly said, they will kill me. I don't, don't take me to any hospital. Just take me home, call the doctor and treat me. I don't want to be in any hospital. I don't, they will kill me. They will kill me, they will kill me. Please don't take me to any hospital, they will kill me. Just take, take me home. Those were the only words he repeatedly said and even the doctors also got a bit worried. And it was a very sorry sight for us, like, a sorry, sorry sight to a point that even when they wanted to put a cannula on him, he was saying, just give me some hot water. I don't have anything in my stomach, you know, and you could tell from the lips which are cracked and his tongue, when you look at his tongue, it's like swollen, it's like, according to him, he says, they are trying to use like, is it a plus or something? A plus or something to like twist it. So you can tell even from his tongue, like he had cuts and his, his lips. So we got, and the police officers kept on coming. Dis they kept on distracting the doctors, saying, no, there is a, is it Dr. Ka, Dr. something? Mm -hmm. The doctor in charge, I don't know, kept on saying uh, they wanted, they shouldn't treat him from there. They wanted DJ to be put in an ambulance right there and then and brought into Lusaka. But we said, we started now going back and forth with the police. We said, he's first getting the first aid. Yes. Look at the situation he's in. Why would you just want to move him, looking at the condition he's in right now? And luckily, we have one of our brothers who is also a complete a medical personnel. So he was also there, like, trying to ask the doctors to say, okay, please check this. And they tried to check the sugar levels and everything else. Fast forward, we even uh, managed to do all medicals and even sent him into the x-ray. But it was not easy then, because phone calls kept on coming. Yeah. So, as usual, the phone calls kept on coming, and the officers kept on claiming that they were getting instructions. Yes. And we even requested to say, can we know who is instructing? Who, is who wants him? Who wants him now? They said, no, there are instructions that are coming from uh, senior officials. They are saying they want him. We said, why do they want him? So we became, even us, our security now became like, you know, we became security conscious. We got very worried. So we told the doctors, you know what? Um, we are worried. This is not okay. Who are they? Why don't they want to talk to us? Why do they just want to instruct doctors? Because we are here. We brought him here. So why can they talk to us and tell us why they want him, why they don't want him to be treated here, and why they just want him to be taken to Lusaka. Quickly, we pushed in for a police report, a medical report, which we, which we quickly signed, and immediately was coming off uh, the x-ray. We started having a back and forth with the police. They wanted him to be in an ambulance full of police officers, but JJ kept on crying like, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want. I don't want, I don't want. Um, now we are receiving instructions that we should go straight, we should go straight with him to Maina Soko. And the police started shouting, like, you know, shouting, hey, you're being stubborn. They even started, uh, like, hitting the car. Move your car, we want to put an ambulance. We need to put him in an ambulance. But we all became agitated. We said, no, we'll not allow you to take him. Mm -hmm. we, were, we became very, very seriously stubborn at that particular point until we managed with the help of the medical personnel, of course, mm -hmm. they were very helpful until we managed to put him in the Fortuna, in our vehicle. So we just dropped the seats and uh, we put the mattress because he couldn't even, we couldn't move him off the mattress. I think we still have the mattress up to now. So we just got him 
on the mattress and put him into the Fortuna and mom jumped in and also my other brother and that's how I drove off and the rest of the vehicle started following us. As we were coming, um, one of the OP vehicles went and, to, and hit into one of, our, uh, one of our cousin's vehicle, Moffat. The OP officers, because Moffat was like trying to pave way for us as we were driving. We were trying to move as fast as possible for us to be able to get him to Midlands. So as we were trying to move, um, a Mark X for, I think it should be the C5, they went and, I think as we were getting towards Lilai, they went and um, bashed into them. Uh, is it a, a VW? Yeah, VW? And that's how it overturned. So we got very, we stopped. And personally, I stopped. I said, no, 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 let's hold on. What is this? Why, why are the police following us like this? To a point of having to bash into another vehicle and the vehicle overturning. So if you notice the Mark for the police, it even has a bad dent this side. That came out, that came from the same accident, you know? So we got worried, we said, the next thing you're going to hit into the Fortuna, because this is the same vehicle that is carrying you. Are you trying to overturn us or there's something we need to know? So now we started moving as fast as we could to try and avoid them, but they also kept on coming and the Mark kept on like, you know? So we even got scared, like, what is going on? What is happening? We tried to call Honorable Bino at that time. He was also coming behind. He says, no, I can see everything. Please just keep going. Our, our main aim here is to get him to the hospital as soon as possible. We saw so many vehicles, police vehicles, which we've not even seen, like, exactly. on the way. And we're even worried, like, what's happening? Is that something we should know? Why is this happening now? So... We go to the hospital and we are blocked again. The same Akex came and blocked my vehicle where Honorable Jojo was. So we had an altercation again. I said, what's going on with you people? Someone needs medical attention. You keep on coming, distracting. Is there something that you want to do? Is there something you want to achieve at the end of the day? Because now we feel agitated. At that point, I think my mother became very emotional. And she started crying. She was like, okay, if you want him dead, get him. My mom got very upset and she, she was there, you know. Her mother's emotions. So when we got there, we reached um, Midlands Hospital. We went to the front side, then we were directed to go to the emergency side. Again, we saw the same cakes again coming on the emergency side, and even the security personnel at the hospital, they even went and confronted the police. Like, why are you trying to block a vehicle that is dropping? They started begging to say, are you able to give us chance? Yeah. So first it was actually the security personnel. They even went and confronted the vehicle like, why are you blocking a vehicle that is bringing someone, a patient, to the, a patient who is coming to the emergency side? And they're just stubborn like the usual police saga. We managed to get him into the emergency room. Less than five minutes, the whole Midlands hospital was overshadowed with police officers. I came out and I asked them, I said, can you tell us something? Do you have an offense for him? Or is there something? Is he a criminal? Can you tell us what is going on? We understand. The doctor also came out and asked, like, can we be excused? Look at the condition he's in. Can we be excused? But more officers kept on coming and even the commissioner at that point bugged into the emergency room. The doctor got very upset and said, no, 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 no. This is an emergency room. The police, you can't just bag him. No, we want to see him. We have a right to see him. We want to see him. Is there something? We said, can you allow the doctors to just work? We called you earlier. You should have gotten there earlier. But they didn't do that. They did not get there early enough. If they wanted that, if they were as concerned as they were trying to show it, they should have gotten there earlier. But they didn't do that. And now the commissioner and all his police officers 
covered the whole entire emergency exit. That's how they shoot it yeah. And by the time the other senior doctors came, and now they started asking, requesting from them. And uh, luckily we had some well wishers, some senior citizens who came in and also just helped us to handle the situation like Honorable Mamba came through and at least tried to help uh, to help me to get between us and the police to see how they can get them outside. They tried to give us space for like, I think that was maximum of 15 minutes. The moment the doctors moved in, because this whole site, the doctors didn't know like the damage because they were trying to check. He, he wanted to urinate, but he couldn't pass the urine because he was in so much pain. So the doctor said, we have to rush him into the, to do the CT scan, the whole body CT scan. So they took him into the X-ray. So we went there, me and my brother were there. And when we got there, as they were just preparing him, because we helped them. As they were just preparing him, we heard noise again. The police came and just broke into the door. They just they broke just the... pushed the door and walked in. Pushed the door it. and uh, the commissioner said, officers, action. Action. Put the tables. Everything felt Let's like a movie. the patient. Carry the patient. Take him out. So me and my sister here, we got very, very upset. I don't know if there are videos out there, but we got very agitated. We told them, if you want to take him here, kill us first. And that's where the noise came. One of the police officers that I can recognize very well came and even pushed me. I even told him, this is battery. Why are you pushing me? Why? Why are you even pushing me in the first place? They started trying, pulling the bed, and they even came with a nurse who had an injection in her hands. And my brother, who is a medical personnel, and the other doctor, they said, but you're not part of us. What are you doing with an injection here? And we noticed the uniform was a police uniform. Yes. And she had only one, um, a blue, I think that was, I don't know a blue jersey or something just to cover her front. But this was a uniform. But what, was, what she was doing in that injection is something that also all the medical personnel, they said, but this one, she's not our nurse. What is she doing in, in here? So we even got more apprehensive. And we started the altercations. You are not going to get him. You are not going to get him. And it went back and forth until the doctor says, no, 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 but we need, this person is actually supposed to be in ICU right now. We brought him here as a matter of emergency to just see what is happening to his body because we can't even turn him. We can't even move him in the state he's in. The police became stubborn until it became bad. We started going back and forth. They were pushing us, we were there, and it was just us, three girls against almost 50 officers. Emotions went in, and the doctors managed to help us until they got the police outside. And the doctors now locked the doors. They said, do not allow anyone in here. Everything became worse when we now stood outside the door. We had, I think, almost, if, I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, almost 30 officers right on the door. And the commissioner, I don't know what his, I don't know his name, but Commissioner Lusaka was spearheading that group. And he kept on pushing us back and forth, telling us they had instructions to take JJ to Minasoko Hospital. We asked them, You've not spoken to us. Nobody came to us to even call us, just to give us the courtesy as a family to say, mm -hmm. from what you've been through, we've never given you proper updates. Because mm -hmm. these are the same police that refused to give us even proper updates. Exactly. We went to the police station almost every day, yeah. begging them for answers. Not even giving us proper answers to just tell us, oh, this is what is happening. But now, there were the same police officers who were there pushing us abusing us in all sorts of ways just to get their way and get JJ out of the hospital. We asked them what is happening, why can't he be treated from here? If you want to secure him, bring your security to be here. Now we want him in a hospital where we have the security. We have instructions to take him. We asked them, can you avail the person? Instructions. Can you avail the person that is instructing you? Let him come and talk to us. Let him come and ask. And we're just the three of us. 
They kept on going back and forth. They tried going separate meetings, trying to eat. The whole saga went on for almost 30 minutes until they were not even done with the x-ray. They came again. Now this time around, I think this more was, officers, yeah. they came with more officers. Maybe they even went almost sickest and they came with guns. So we told them we are not scared of guns. If kill, us can first. kill us Kill us first. Kill us, then when you kill us, mm -hmm. you take him. At that point, we stopped fearing. We told them, you know what, we've had enough. You've tormented us enough. We have suffered enough. Do what you want, but don't take him away from me. If you want, let him first be treated, then take him after. Yes. They didn't hear not even that. What did the commissioner instruct the commissioner instructed the police and said, take them out, action, use force, use power. <sighs> it's at that point when the beating started, the pushing around, that's how we are being dragged. trying to break the door for the hospital and the whole ugly brutality that we've never seen is what we saw today. And the only sad part is in a hospital, not even the courtesy to say there is a life at stake. And this is a person that we don't know how they see him, but to us he's a treasure. You know, for us, that's the only father figure we have. We are fatherless children, yes, but that's the only father we look up to. So we don't know what that meant to them. Okay. Well, they, we don't know how that whole situation, we tried by all means to stop that whole ugly nightmare. But the beating became worse. I think I still have the swellings here. Where well, some of the officers even grabbed my phone for my sister. She was not even capturing, up to now my phone can show, we're not even capturing anything. She was on phone trying to seek for help. They grabbed the phone from her, started pushing us outside. Others were hitting us. And, and the one officer I can recognize very well, I think it's one who even put my hair this side. And they started using a... Uh, the hand of the gun handles like to push us, like to hit us. And Honor Babino even got upset and said, But these are girls you are doing this to. The whole entire police, all of you, fifty of you, just on three girls. It's so unreasonable. Honor Babino was there and even other members now of the public came, you know, trying to stop them but they couldn't even stop. It just it moved from worse to bad. And the way they were dragging Jay, he kept on screaming. I'm yes, sure if we were to get the CCTV and the screaming even agitated us more. He kept on screaming the help, like, ouch, ouch, even the way they dragged that bed and the way they were trying to push it into the ambulance. And I tried to close the doors for the ambulance. That's how one officer came, pushed me to the ground. And... <sighs> JJ was in a lot of pain. He kept on asking for help. He was in a lot of pain, and they were carrying him like a piece of paper. You know, they were pushing him with no duty of care, no remorse, no courtesy. And, and yet they were busy dragging. No, we are trying to move him because he's a member of parliament. But you are saying this is a member of parliament. We've never even heard from the speaker, not even from anyone that has ever reached to us, other than just the few the meaning if Zambians have reached out to us, to talk to us, then you're telling us to say, you want to secure him because he's a property of the state, because he's a member of parliament. Why 
is he only becoming a member of parliament or important to you people now that we had to get him to Midlands Hospital? Why? And that whole beating, the whole focus, we didn't even get it. The grabbing of phones, something we've never experienced in the history of Zambia, something we've never seen at a hospital, even the hospital personnel were even, they were all in shock. Were shocked. Everyone was shocked. We couldn't even believe what was happening. And Honorable Jack Mimbo was there, standing. And we pleaded. We yeah. went, we pleaded, we knelt, we knelt down. down, helplessly. We even told him, I removed words to say, you have, you have daughters, you have children. You have children, have some remorse. Tell your officers at least, just to be cautious enough, just a little duty of care. He didn't listen. We pleaded with him. Honorable Jack, we walked to him in those corridors. He was next to We pleaded, we knelt down, we begged him. And the worst part of it, he goes and makes a press statement over it. And in the press statement, he doesn't even state exactly what happened. Honorable Munia Zulu tried to beg him too. Honorable. Almost everybody tried as hard to reason with them, including the medical personnel. They tried hard to reason with them, but they didn't listen because it's a state, obviously. They are working under instructions. The worst part of it is one officer even slapping me and I'm asking him, why did you slap me? And he answered me to my face, I'm working under instructions and I can even recognize the face. My face is still swollen. Still swollen. And all they could answer was, we are working under instructions. As if that was not enough, barely minutes after all that misery, after all that fracas that they caused at the hospital and just moving him without our consent and just driving off after hitting us and just driving off like that, we were just barely arriving at the hospital trying to settle in, we were all packed outside. Personally, I even had to park outside. My phone was not even there with me. Next thing, we just hear to say, someone comes and says, Honorable Jack Mwimbo is doing a press briefing. A press briefing? About what? And even addresses the nation and says, uh, the police were working 24-7. These are the same officers who failed to give us little update just to tell us what was happening. They said they didn't know. So why were they waking 24-7 when they didn't know? The DCIO, Mr. Mwetu, was even very rude to us. Very, very rude. He even answered us. I think it's, we even have it on record. Where he even answered me to say, you are calling me on a private line. This is my private line. When we are in, we are in distress, we don't even know whether Jay is okay or not. We are distressed. Not even to give us a little courtesy to just tell us to say, no, calm down, we're handling the situation. No, we're doing what we can. Probably like that. No, but you're calling me, you're asking me about the vehicle, relocating of the vehicle on my private line. This is my private line. It's not a public line. You are, you are a civil servant. You are working for the public. And you ask me to say I'm calling you on a, on, on a private line. Like, 
And Honorable Jack Mwimbo praised them. He said the police were working tirelessly. Tirelessly. If you are working tirelessly, why didn't you get there before us? Even after we we were cautious enough to call you, to report to you when we were leaving Lusaka. Why did we still get there, even almost at the same time with you? And with only two officers. Which police were working tirelessly if we were only there with two officers? How? At 24-7? Most of the police officers were only seeing them at 03 when we got to Midland Hospital. That's when we saw a team of police officers that were even ambushing us. So that's 24-7. And Honorable Jack Mumbu says, they are bare, they are, no, they are not even bruises. He's okay. He's okay. GJ is fine. GJ is fine. Why is, it, why is he in my Nasoko hospital? Why are they keeping him? Why are you keeping him? Honorable he's Jack fine. Mumbu, you said he's okay. Mm. Give him to us. Why is he being kept in my Nasoko? Hospital. Why? Is it a show? Exactly. If he's okay, is that some sort of drama or some what is it all about? Because if he's okay, then give him to us. Because we know the bruises he has. We took those pictures, we were there first hand. We have the pictures. And we release them to the press. The beatings are all visible. The marks are visible. His back is distorted. When you look, when you see below his feet, it's a sorry sight. So why is he, how is he okay? Is it because he's a strong person that he's even able to talk? So how is he fine? How is he okay? If he's okay, give him to us. Release him to the public. Let the public see him that he's okay. Personally, from the time he even went into my Nasoka, I haven't even been allowed to see him. Because we're short the security. And yet, I am the same person. Joe was telling, don't take me to a government hospital. I don't feel safe. He's never, been to He's never even been to a government hospital. But you are telling us, we can see him. The same people he trusts, the same people he caught first, the same people he tried to reach out to first. Because at least he called his mother's number. So how is he okay? Oh, this is hurting. You're hurting us more. It's like adding more salt to the wounds. We are human. We can only be young girls, yes, but we can still take care of us. So if you feel he's okay, give him to us. He may mean very little to you, but to us he's a king. He's a treasure. He's all that we have. He's the only male figure we have. So give him to us. Tipasen. Tipasen. We don't know. You've kept him at Menasoko. That's your territory. We don't know. According to his testimonies from the time he came, he says he's scared. He keeps on confessing that he's scared. We don't know what he's scared of. JJ is traumatized. One minute he's trying to talk throughout hours with him in that room at Kapiwa General Hospital. One minute he wants to try and reach out to your hand. All the pictures and videos are there. One minute he's traumatized. He, when you look at him, this is not even him. I would to hit me was in a dark room that he can't he couldn't even see light. He's traumatized. So he You have treated us unfairly. We deserved better. We may not have all the voices to speak for us, but
that we deserved better. The whole fracas, everything that we had to endure, we didn't really deserve it. You could have treated us better. And to the members of the public, we can never even wish this upon an enemy. They say you can only know pain when you go through it. You can only understand the power of loss when you go through it. Grief is something you can never understand unless you endure it. But this, and to think that it's happening to us in a country we call our home, is the most painful part of it. Something we never, we, we can't see, we sit, we've been sitting with my sisters like, did this really happen? And we all just break in an instant. Because we can't even believe what we're going through. We don't even know whether we'll still be challenged to this or not. We don't know whether we we'll still have to go through this some other day or not. We don't even know. We don't even know whether we are safe, whether these same police officers are supposed to protect us, because these are the same police officers that were hitting us today. So we don't know. We would really never wish this upon anyone, not even an enemy. No matter the difference, nobody deserves such a pain. We didn't deserve it. And we'd like to say a big thank you to the public for all the voices, the members of parliament that stood up with a serious disappointment of the speaker of the National Assembly not speaking over this. We are grateful to the main MPs that bore it and spoke talk about this, that Lord Post walked up to us, yeah. held our hands, prayed with us. We are only children, it's just us. But we are very grateful for the many members that came through even just to visit us at home and gave us hope because it's all we could, we could need at that particular time. All the prayers that we received the chiefs that have become like our father, Chief Mumbi that is more like our father to us from the time we lost our father, thank you very much. To all the chiefs in Eastern Province, to all the political leaders that reached out to us, that spoke to us and encouraged us, we are very grateful to you people. We can never thank you enough. And above everything, we are so grateful to God that despite the condition Jay is in, at least they've given him back to us alive. It's all we could ask. Thank you very much. from the family and uh, uh, they still need your prayers uh, for them to be able to deal with the trauma that they've been through. Um, yes, it is a good thing that we have uh, found that JJ is alive. But what is also important is that he must be allowed to heal. He must be allowed to choose the medical facility he is to go to. Under our laws and our constitution, you've got the right to choose which medical facility you will utilize, which medical personnel are the ones who will deal with you. JJ specifically did state that he wanted to be at Medland 
hospital and he specifically stated that he did not want to be in any government institution. That should be respected. That is a right that he has. And when somebody is under the hands of a medical doctor, you cannot move them away without that medical doctor stating that it is safe to do so. The medical personnel at Medlands Hospital specifically told the policemen who came that they felt it would be unsafe to move him, and they went against medical advice. What is clear is that Honorable J.J. Banda was taken into the hands of the state from Medlands Hospital alive. That everybody must take note of, including the government. It is therefore the duty of the government, of Honorable JJ and his police, indeed of the UPND government, of the President of Zambia, to ensure that the person they received alive is brought back to his family alive. It is a duty they have. They chose to intervene and so they must make sure that their intervention does not end up with a tragedy at the end. They have a duty to ensure that JJ is brought back alive into the hands of his family. As for the Human Rights Commission, you have heard for yourselves that the family is not being allowed to see Honorable J.J. Banda. It is incumbent upon you to fulfill your constitutional role of being the defenders of human rights. Surely, they've got a right to see their relative. They've got the right to take their relative to a medical facility of their choice. If you are unable to ensure that you protect such rights, it is best that you vacate your offices. So I implore you, do your work. Protect the rights of Honorable JJ and his family. Thank you. Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.